I've been using drafts as my main source to write and store text for over two years now. What I like about it is how flexible it is. I can write a 2000 word script in Markdown and then make a new draft and write out a task list with task paper. Drafts is a text editor, and the idea behind it is that you start your text here, then send it off to where it needs to go. I, like others, adapted it and use it for a place to store notes, long form documents, snippets of text, and more. It's like how a lot of people have been starting to use Notion, minus the collaboration. But the benefit is, I get a really good native app. It specializes in Markdown and a few other languages like TaskPaper and JavaScript. If you're not aware of what Markdown and TaskPaper are, I will put some links in the description of this video that will explain. Draft's default behavior is to open a new document every time you open the app as long as it's been 60 seconds since the last time you opened the app. I love this feature on my iPhone because I use Drafts there to just write down ideas and quick pieces of text that I don't want to forget. But on my iPad, I like to have the draft I was working on last up when I open the app. Usually here I'm working on longer documents, but if I want to do something new, it's easy to open a new draft. You can just hit Command N on the keyboard or by tapping the plus button in the top left corner. Down at the bottom, you'll see an eye icon. If you tap on this, it'll turn on focus mode. This will prevent the functionality of a new draft opening when you open the app. It'll keep the draft that you are currently working on open. It's a per device setting, so I have it on on my iPad and off on my iPhone. Drafts doesn't have a folder system for storing documents. It uses tags. I like this because it feels faster, but there's also a lot more you can do with it, but we'll get into that in a minute. You can assign a tag by tapping on the tag icon in the top left or by hitting Command T. I always recommend keeping tags simple and broad. If you have a large project with a lot of drafts in it, you can assign multiple tags. When assigning a tag, there will be the tags that you've used already down at the bottom. With tags, you can build workspaces. These are essentially filters that allow you to see drafts with the corresponding tag. For instance, I have a workspace that shows me all of my drafts that have the tag script. This will allow me to quickly see all my active scripts that I'm currently working on. To build a workspace, hit the workspace menu button, go to manage, then new. Here you can name the workspace, give it an icon, and change the color. But under that, there is a tag filter option. Here you can enter the tag or tags you want to filter by. If you wish to add more than one, just add a comma between them. I recommend adding the singular and plural version of the tag, just in case you forget which one you used. Under that, select if you want the filter to match all or any of the tags. All will require every draft to have all the tags that are in the filter. Any will show all drafts that just have one of those tags. I usually stick with any. There are a few more preferences you can play with as well here. But once you're done, you'll have a new workspace. One workspace that I think everyone should have is an inbox. The idea for this is that if a draft doesn't have a tag, it goes here. How I normally use drafts, especially for quick snippets, is I open it up, type what I was thinking, doing, need to remember, and then close the app. This will be added to the inbox then. Throughout the day, I'll come back and file anything that is here away or deal with it. That way I'm not wasting time in the moment, but I also don't forget or lose what I was thinking about. To make this, create a new workspace, but this time instead of typing a tag, type untagged. This will gather all the drafts that don't have a tag. There are a few other options you can use these special tags for that the dialog box mentions just underneath. In settings, I also set up the inbox workspace to have badges. This way I know if something is there and needs to be taken care of. Now that we have our workspaces set up, you've probably noticed the columns at the top. There is inbox, flagged, archive, all, and trash. I use inbox for everything that I am currently working on. Flagged to mark something that is extremely important. I should note that the flag column doesn't move a draft, it just marks it. So if something is in the inbox and you flag it, it won't be moved out of the inbox. It'll just have a flag and be in the flag section as well. 
Archive is where I put everything when I'm done with it, but may want to refer back to it in the future. All is a filter that will show everything for the current workspace or search. Then trash for stuff I don't need or were one-off items. You could swipe on a document to quickly move them between these sections or long press on it to get the contextual menu. I mentioned that drafts is like Notion and one of drafts newest feature moves that bar even closer. This is creating wikis. Using this, you can link to other drafts, searches, and workspaces in the app. To link to a draft, type two open brackets, the draft name, and then two close brackets. Now you can tap on that link and we'll open that draft. Like mentioned, you can use this with search and workspaces as well. For searches, do two open brackets, S, colon, then the search term, then two close brackets. Now when you tap on that, Drafts will do a search in the app for that term. To open a workspace, it's similar. Just change out the S for a W. But Drafts can link to stuff outside the app as well. By putting in Google or Wikipedia as the search operator, it will then do a search on those services as well. But wait, that's not all. You can open a note from the app Bear as well. Do the two open brackets, Bear, followed by a colon, then type the title of the Bear note, then two close brackets. Now tap on that and this will open the app Bear with that note. I'm personally really excited about this. It will be extremely handy for my iPad OS 14 research for the inevitable walkthrough video. You could also build yourself a daily agenda using this feature as well. When in a draft, you could swipe down on the draft or two finger swipe down on the trackpad to get a search box. This is an extremely robust search that will search all of the app, not just the current filter. I use this to quickly jump between drafts I'm working on. It's also worth noting that you can use the iPad search to also look up a draft if you're not currently in the app. Actions are the bread and butter of drafts. This is what allows you to do automation in the app and send content to other apps as well. You can build an action to run a shortcut, add a file to a storage provider, or even run JavaScript. When making an action, you can name it, change the color, and the icon just like the workspace. The steps is where automation happens. Here you can add different kinds of steps. I'll make a follow-up video talking about the actions I use. For now, if you hit the plus button, then select visit directory, you can find some pre-made actions. Search around for actions that work with the apps you use. There is definitely a lot of support for task managers like OmniFocus and things. Some actions on here are actually groups. Groups are a bunch of actions in a container. You can build your own group and actions together if you want. Just hit the plus button, manage all groups, and then hit new group. Here you can choose where a group shows up. One option is the sidebar, like I've been showing you. The other is the toolbar, which is down at the bottom. Things like inserting a markdown link or a block of code live down in the toolbar for me. I use the sidebar for actions that do something to the whole active draft. One group I made was a template group. Here I made a few actions with templates that I often use. When making the action, I just use the insert text action, then type or paste the text that I wanna use. Then when I need that template, I just tap the button and it fills it all in. It saves me a ton of time and makes everything very consistent. When writing a long document in any text editor, rearranging text can be kind of annoying. In drafts, there is an arrange mode. Select the button at the bottom next to the arrows. Here you can arrange any text by block, line, or sentence. This is extremely handy when I write longer scripts. I mostly arrange things by block. This looks at markdown headers so you can rearrange whole sections. Along the same lines is the ability to jump to sections. This works by looking at the markdown headers. I hit the arrow down button at the top next to the word count. Then I will select a header from that document and it will jump to that point. Again, really handy for writing large documents. In that same section, you can change the filter to be recent drafts. 
When you select one of those, the app will open that draft. Down at the bottom, there is an icon that is a box with an arrow going out of it. Tapping that will open a preview of whatever draft you are working on. If you write in Markdown, it will give you a full preview of that document. iPad OS 13 added the ability for contextual menus, essentially right-click menus. Drafts did an excellent job of adopting these. Long pressing or right clicking on almost any menu button will give you a shortcut to some common features in the windows. If you do this on the action menu, you can get the action group, then the actions that are in the group and can run them. While drafts is a text editor, you can also use it as a task manager. While I won't be giving up things anytime soon, I do use this for checklists. If you use the default syntax in drafts, which is markdown, you can just type dash, space, open bracket, space, close bracket. Then type the first item and hit enter. Since we put the dash in front, the next line will already have the empty checkbox. To mark something as done, just tap on the box. If you wish to use task paper, create a new draft that changes the syntax down at the bottom by long pressing and hit change syntax, then select task paper or you could just long press on the new draft button and select new with syntax and then pick task paper. For task paper, you just type dash, then space, then the task. To mark something as complete, you just tap on the dash. You can also assign other tags like due dates by using the at symbol. A feature that has really saved my bacon is version history. If you hit the I icon in a draft, you'll see some details about that particular document. One of those options is version. Here you can go back and pick an older version of a draft if something got deleted or changed that wasn't supposed to. Normally undo is fine if you realize what happened pretty quickly, but I have needed stuff that got deleted days ago and this has saved me. For actions, you can also assign keyboard shortcuts. Go into the action editor and scroll down. Pick the modifier keys and then the letter, number, or symbol. It won't let you overwrite any system keyboard shortcuts or the ones that are built into drafts. So if you get an error, try something else. Speaking of drafts shortcuts, it's a good idea to memorize them if you wanna use this app a lot. It will save you a ton of time. Most of the shortcuts are pretty standard for a text editor. My final piece of advice is use drafts in SlideOver. It's a great place to dump important info that might come up throughout the day. I store all sorts of weird things here. I may not keep it forever, but it's a really handy place to put that information. This is not the one and only way to use drafts. It's a very flexible app, so figure out what works for you. We recently did an episode of my podcast, A Slab of Glass, on drafts. We had Tim Nahumik on, and to say he is an expert in drafts is an understatement. I will link to that episode and his work in the description below. If you enjoy what I do here, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. It really does help out. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great day.